Have you ever wondered why it's so dark in some galleries in museums? Hello, my name is Capricine Kornberg and welcome to my corner. I'm a conservation scientist at the British Museum and I've been here since 2003. But I'm not entirely sure why uh, I'm interested in science. Uh, as a kid, I, I was very good at math and physics and, and chemistry. So I decided to, yeah, to, to study this further. So in France, I, I did um, a degree in uh, engineering school, the Grandes Écoles in physics in Grenoble. And uh, I came to London during the last year of my studies uh, as an Erasmus exchange student. I went to Imperial College. And I still wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. But I, I, really, I was really interested in the properties of materials and especially polymers. So at the end of my degree, I decided to do a PhD looking at the durability of adhesives. Uh, and so when I say durability, it's to look how adhesives perform in humid environments. So I, I did this, and after my PhD, I still wasn't too sure what I was going to do. But um, during a, a holiday, I think it was Christmas holiday, I went back to France, and I love books. So I, I was in a bookshop, and I spotted a small book that was called Art and Science. And it explained all the work that scientists do in museums. And I, I was just fascinated. And I thought, this is exactly what I want to do. Here at the British Museum, we have a collection of 8 million objects. Some are light fast, and, and light won't damage them. But some of them, such as watercolor or leather objects, will be um, uh, damaged by light. They will fade or they will darken, they can even become brittle. And it's our job in uh, the preventive conservation team to make sure that this damage is minimized as possible. Preventive conservation is quite different from interventive conservation. Interventive treatments are um, how to repair an object, how to stabilize it. Preventive conservation look at how to preserve objects by minimizing the effects of factors such as light, humidity, pollution. One part of my role is to deal with, with light and how to minimize the detrimental effects of light on objects. There's a body of research into light fading. So for instance, we know that uh, dyed textile we are susceptible to fading. But in order to um, estimate how light fast or light sensitive an object is, we need to know exactly what the dye, the pigment is. And, and this takes a lot of work. So we have a tool, the microfading kit, which enables us to assess the light fastness of an object without having to identify what it is exactly. Microfading is an accelerated aging technique. So we are trying to mimic what's going to happen in, in real time, for instance, over the next 25 years. We're trying to replicate that in 10 minutes. So we use a very intense source of light, 10 million lux, compared to the 50 lux we have in the galleries. And we um, expose a tiny spot of the object to this very intense light. Typically, the, the, the size of the spot of light is 0 0.3 mil, uh, millimeter diameter. So it, it's completely invisible to the naked eye. We're in the Enlightenment Gallery, and as you can see, the light levels here are quite low. One feature of this gallery is we have motorized blinds on the windows on both sides of the gallery. In the morning, when the sun comes from the east side, the blinds on the east side of the gallery are, are down. But after uh, noon, the blinds on the west side of the gallery comes down and the blinds on the east side comes up. And this is because we want to allow some daylight in the gallery to make it feel like a, like a Victorian gallery. Even though we have some daylight, the light levels are still within our recommendation. Th this album of watercolor belonged to Sir Hans Sloan. It's a collection of natural history drawings 
and they are painted in watercolor, which is very light sensitive. To minimize the light exposure that each page gets, the curator comes every three months to the gallery, opens the showcase, and turns a page so that a new page is exposed.